One, two, three. Hi, and we are Testing. back on the indie stage at TwitchCon 2016 in San Diego. I am here with Thunder Lotus Games. Yes. Yes. First try. And we're here with Will and Roderick. These are the makers of? Jotun. Jotun. How many of you guys have played Jotun? Yes, yes, yes. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful game. I myself played it. I streamed it. It's one of my favorite titles that I've played, you know, in recent memory. So, Thank you. So first of all, let's, let's introduce what Jotun is just really quickly so we can wander on into our announcement for the new title. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, Jotun is a hand-drawn action exploration game set in Norse mythology. You play Thora, a Viking warrior who died an inglorious death and must prove herself to the gods to enter Valhalla. We launched on Steam in September 2015 and just under a month ago on PS4, X1, and Wii U. And uh, yeah, that was a great, 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 uh, great ride and we're really excited uh, to announce our new title. Yeah, congratulations on Jotun and now for the new title. Do you want to introduce us a little bit or do you just want to show it to the world? Um, yeah, let's do let's do the trailer. All right, let's, let's well, go for it. We'll see you on the other side of the trailer. I'm so mad right now because I purposely saved myself from seeing the trailer. I wanted to be surprised. I didn't get to see the trailer. How was the trailer? You guys didn't see it either? No! Uh, we should definitely play it again then. Let's lay up. Can we do it again? Or We'll let them figure it out. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to play it for real this time. That last time was just a test. Psych. <laughs> It was a tease, a big tease. <laughs> Just a tease. You saw the end of it, though. It was good. <laughs> and go. Twitch. <laughs> this is the life. Right. Live. Live. guys let's give it up for our stage engineer we got the trailer this time what did you guys think of the trailer yeah 
it's beautiful, right? Oh, thank you very much. Very gorgeous. And I already noticed the difference is that it's side scrolling now. Yeah, right? absolutely. We're we're going uh, for a bit of a different style right now. Uh, Sundered is a is a horrifying fight for survival and sanity. It's a replayable Metroidvania where you oh. fight hordes of eldritch monsters, explore an ever-changing world, and choose to resist or embrace ancient eldritch powers. Oh, so there's choice. There's player choice. Yeah, absolutely. So we really wanted to build on Jotun's uh, strengths, so the hand-drawn art, the big boss fights, the immersion. But we wanted to add a lot of replayability, a lot of choices, um, so you get these abilities in the game and you can choose to corrupt them or not. Uh, and that brings you closer into the dark side and the oh, madness and all that. That's very cool. And the name, I, I noticed, is another female character. So, yep. you know, it's, it's already speaking to me directly. Oh, perfect. Right? <laughs> and what is the character's name? Esh. Esh. How do you spell that? E S uh, C H. No, E S H E. Oh, <laughs> very pretty. So, talk about the new features of Sundered. Yeah, so Sundered is a. Uh, as you can see, it's a side-scroller, uh, replayable Metroidvania. So I, I think the best comparables in terms of gameplay are Rogue Legacy and Super Metroid. Nice. So it's a, it's a world, the structure is, all, all, is set in stone, but subsections of it are procedurally generated. Oh, nice. So you get that Metroidvania aspects where you unlock new abilities that unlock new regions in the world, allow you to go different places. But then uh, every time you die, you go back to the hub. You can spend your shards to, to upgrade your character. Oh, that's very cool. I don't think I've ever seen anything like that. I'm a huge fan of Metroidvania games. I love Metroidvania. The last Metroidvania I played was Headlander, and I thought it was a very right. polished title. Um, this has a completely different feel to it, and I'm super looking forward to it. What kinds of things can we expect in the procedurally generated areas? Yeah, so, so what's cool about the procedural generation is that not only the dungeon in Sundered is procedurally generated, but also the monsters spawn dynamically. Nice. So it's all event-based. The monsters aren't like placed in the levels. They can appear from anywhere at any time. And that's where we also have these giant hordes come in. Um, so they kind of surprise you, and, and that's where the big, uh, that big sound in the trailer, the big bong, the yeah. big gong, kind of announces the, the, the hordes. Well, that's awesome. So the first game was based very heavily in North Mythos, right? Yes. What is the, the lore? What's the background for this game? So the biggest inspiration for Sundered is uh, the writings of H.P. Lovecraft. Oh, okay. Um, we're definitely not being as, like, like with Joden, we were, like, super pure, super close to the mythology yes. as much as possible. For Sundered, we've, more, we've taken more liberties. We've been inspired by uh, the Lovecraftian writings, mm -hmm. but uh, we're definitely, we've created a whole backstory for the world. Um, it's a full, it's a single player game. There's a full story as well. And uh, it's just going to be a really cool experience to be able to go into the yeah. world and learn about the backstory and what happened there. Yeah, that's very, I'm sorry. I'm trying not to like do the drooly face because it's, <laughs> it's so pretty. It's oh, thank so you very pretty much. and I'm trying to tear my eyes away for one second. Okay, so it looks very combat heavy, very combat driven. Yes, yes. Hordes of monsters. I'm loving that. And the back, the camera pulling back to take it all in. Um, the backdrops obviously are very beautiful. Same artist, it looks like. Yes, yeah. uh, it's uh, Joanie is the art director. She was the art director on on uh, on Jotun. She's still the art director on uh, Sundered, and we have the same animator, Alex Boyi, and a new animator as well. So uh, it, it's uh, it's great to be able to work with the same team yeah. again. Yeah, you can definitely get the feel that this is not you know a sequel to Jotun, but it's made by the same team that loved Jotun so well. You know, I yeah, really absolutely. love that. So oh, let's talk you. about the, the combat, because it looks like it's very Yeah, so it's, it's more uh, melee, melee focused. Mm -hmm. So uh, maybe to go into maybe a bit of the lore a bit more, you have what's called the, sh the Shining Trapezoidron, which is this stone that you discover at the beginning of the game. Um, so Esh is kind of this lone wanderer in this post-apocalyptic world, and she kind of ends up in, this, in these crazy halls. Yeah. And um, you're not really, you don't really know what's going on. It's a bit of a mystery. And and right at the beginning of the game, you get the Shining Trapezoidron, which is this stone that gives her all these powers, and it gives her like the, the, the attacks and stuff. So if, Rodrigo, you just do some of the attacks, you'll see it kind of they come out of nowhere, and they're kind of very magical, very special. And so uh, it's very much a melee-focused game. Uh, we're kind of, we have like the regular attacks, we have the charge attacks, we have the gun as well that you unlock. Uh, and then all of this ties into uh, the, the uh, upgrade system. Oh, nice. Can we look at the upgrade system? Yeah, so... I'm to, always to, interested in that. To do that, uh, Rodrigo is going to have to die. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, we can save can, that. That's we okay. We can just jump onto these spikes here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. That's, that's tragic. 
Yeah, so every time, <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's a game that you're supposed to die a lot. You, you, the, the, when you die, the world is, is regenerated. Oh, wow. That's where all the subsections are procedurally generated once again. And this here is the, is the skill tree we're well, doing. Well, that's not intimidating at all. No, no, no. Well, it's 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 early. It's it's a pre 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 alpha. Yeah. It's the first publicly playable build of the game, so this will most likely go through a few iterations. But as you can see, there's the main node there with the shield on it, which is one of the Metroid-style abilities you get in the game. So if you can just go down to the shield, please, and you'll see these abilities are like the main abilities in the game. You'll unlock those, those are the ones that give you new movement abilities, allow you to unlock different parts of the world. If you go up, you have like more minor nodes, which are more stat-based, health, energy, armor, that kind of thing. And then at the end, we have like the bigger impact uh, abilities, like energy regeneration. Nice. So you have an energy bar, the yellow bar at the bottom of your screen is uh, uh, your energy. So everything takes energy, special attacks, all that. Pretty classic stuff. So as you die, you get to spend the shards you collected, nice. and then you go back a new run, a new dungeon, and uh, try and, and get a little further every time. Okay. So what I find interesting is in Metroidvania, there's always backtracking, right? That's the yes. main kind of focus in Metroidvania is you unlock new abilities, new power-ups, things like that, and you can backtrack, access new areas. With procedural generation, how does that work? Yeah, so that's actually one, one of the things that, that really caught people's attention and that people <laughs> were really adamant about on forums and stuff. When we announced the game, a lot of people said, oh, procedural Metroidvania, yeah. not possible, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But um, the fact is that the, the structure of the world is, it doesn't change. So the overall layout, uh, the abilities, where you get them and stuff, that is always at the same place. But what is procedurally generated are these subsections. Okay. Um, so it's kind of like a game like Diablo, where you have the overall structure of the yeah. world is, is set in stone, but when you go into a level, um, you do get a, a different, a different like tile set every time. Okay. So do the tile sets change as you get new abilities, or will you always see parts of these tile sets that you can't access just yet? Like, do you go back? Yeah, absolutely. So how how we get things to to create that backtracking is through the abilities. Yeah. So for example, this is uh, the ability, the first ability we're showing off. It's the power dash, mm -hmm. and it replaces your dodge. So now it's much faster. And it allows you to go through these purple gravity fields, oh, which okay. were blocking you before. You can unlock new secrets, new places. Um, so that opens up a whole new set of levels, a whole new set of, uh, of places you can go in the world. But uh, it is region-based. Uh, so once you're, you're through like the first region, you're going to want to progress to the second region okay. to unlock the story, to understand the new boss fights and all that. Yeah. Um, so the, you, you're always progressing in the game. Okay, so you mentioned boss fights. In Jotun, obviously, the boss fights are a huge focus. They're massive. They are titanic. Yeah. They're almost Shadow of Colossus sort of big. Um, what are the bosses going to be like in Sundered? Can I you think, talk uh, about it? I think, I think you're, you're going to see it soon. Oh, wow. <laughs> so there's already a boss in here. Yeah, so yeah. There's they're like faster, Roderick. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so, I mean, obviously the big boss fights in Jodan were, like, an enormous part of the experience. Yeah. Yeah. And I think one of the strongest parts of the game, obviously. Yeah. And so that's definitely something we wanted to bring back for Sundered. Um, to make sure that, that you have that feeling of, of epic accomplishment yeah. when you beat the boss. Mm -hmm. And just feeling like David versus Goliath type, uh, type feeling. Uh, which I think was super powerful and, and definitely something we want to emulate in, in Sundered. That's crazy. Yeah, I remember a couple of the bosses in Jotun. You are a dot. You're yeah. a dot running around with what appears to be an axe, maybe? Yeah, and well, now you're... That. Oh, there we go. What's I think, this boss called? I think this boss is, is even bigger than any boss we've ever done <laughs> in Jotun. So, so, yeah, we're, we're, it's just more of a tease to show yeah, off the boss. Of uh, course. But, uh, you cruel bastards. <laughs> cruel bastards. I want to see more of that. Well, if you want to see more, definitely head over to thunderlotusgames.com. Yep. Sign up to our mailing list. Uh, we'll have news about the game, uh, alpha access, stuff like that. So uh, we're very, very looking forward to, to, to showing more. Yeah. And you guys work really closely with streamers, right? Yeah. Can you talk about that at all? Yeah, absolutely. So Rodrigue is, is, uh, uh, is uh, our marketing communication specialist. He really does uh, most of the PR there, if you want to talk about it a little bit. Well, sure. I mean, for like, I'm only... Uh, I've just came onto the team just two months ago, right? So, uh, but a main part of what we're wanting to do here as we're bringing uh, Sunder to the market is to use uh, streamers as like the first, uh, the, the first uh, phase of yeah. the people who are gonna just 
show what, what the game can be. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, so yeah, I mean, we're here at TwitchCon for that very reason. Like, we wanted streamers to be the first ones to have their hands on the game. We had the, the first trailer reveal this week, uh, Monday. That's awesome. And, you know, first people to actually play the game were yesterday. What kind of feedback are you getting here at the con? Really great feedback. Like, what I'm surprised. Is it, you know, what, what's the most striking for them? The visual style, the combat? You're getting a lot of feedback about the art style. Yep. Like the, the art style, you, you see it. Like, it draws the people to the screen. Mm -hmm. And what I'm very, very pleased about, about the feedback we're getting is, people are just saying, like, it plays so well. Yeah. Like it, the, the controls are tight, which is the main thing. Like, you can draw people in with a nice art style, but if it doesn't play well, they're going to put the controller down right away. So I'm really, really pleased to see how it's going. Yeah. And the controls, are they fluid? There's a different kinds of platforming controls. There's, like, the kind of slick Super Meat Boy sort of style. There's the stop and go style. There's the pause, vulgarish style. No, we're definitely going for, for as smooth as possible. As like smooth as that, possible. That, that really great feeling of jump, like getting that gravity just right, yeah. getting the amount of floatiness just right. Uh, I see a lot of aerial attacks. There yeah, exactly. Goes like you, here, if you if you go through the game again, you keep going through yeah. it, um, you'll see the when you attack, you, you jump, you attack a monster, You can it actually resets your jump. So you can nice. jump to the next one, and you can chain oh, those really? together. Yeah, and if you use like the, the down spike, it'll knock the monsters yeah. up, and, and you, you can kind of chain attacks. So we're trying to go for that kind of Super Smash Brothers um, very fluid yep. West style of combat. That's very cool. Let's see some of. I just want to see some more of this combat firsthand. You stop talking for a second. I just want to see what. <laughs> oh wow! And when are you planning on? I know it's it's really early right now. Pre 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 alpha. Do you have just because Jordan came out in what less than two years? Do you, do you have as ambitious a time frame for Sundered? Yeah, well, we started working on Sundered uh, at the beginning of this year in January, yep. and uh, we want to release it uh, next year. We don't have a specific time yet, but yep. uh, 2017, PS4 and uh, PC, so wow. that's going to be really exciting. That's awesome. So when you relaunched on PS4 and consoles for Jotun, you added things like boss attack mode and things like yeah, that, right? Yeah, we, we, did, uh, we did Valhalla Edition, which yeah. had a Valhalla mode in it, which was a, like a new game plus. Yeah. So when we did Kickstarter in 2014 for Jordan, uh, one of the, well, the only stretch goal we hit was a new game plus. Nice. So we were, we were happy to finally be able to deliver that promise. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, it's, uh, it was Valhalla mode. It's uh, an, an, an even harder version of the already challenging Jotuns. Uh, to be honest, like I haven't even beaten the whole thing yet, so tis, tis. <laughs> it's pretty, it's tis, pretty tis. brutal. Like, Shame. Yeah, Shame. I, I, I probably shouldn't <laughs> be saying that uh, in public, but uh, it's the truth. Are you going to be including those features in Thunder? Yeah, we'll see. Um, obviously, right now we're focusing on the on the making a great single player experience. Um, like uh, coming back to your question about the streamers, about integrating streamers yeah. into the game. Uh, that actually had a huge influence on Sunder's uh, design because yeah. Joden, with the art style and, and with the, the, the success of the game, we had a lot of coverage from, you know, yeah. from streamers and YouTubers and media and all that. Yeah. But the problem was people played it and they finished it in about five and a half hours yeah. and then that was it. Yeah. So we had this great exposition but like, we weren't able to really capitalize on, on streamers in that sense. Also, people watching streams of Joden, they kind of got the full experience because there aren't that many choices, there's not right. a lot of replayability. So we really wanted to integrate a lot of choices in, in Sundered, a lot of replayability. That's mm -hmm. where the, the procedural world comes into play. That's where the, the skill tree comes into play. That's where yeah. the, the choice to corrupt your abilities or not yeah. comes into play. We're even doing multiple endings, so. Oh, wow, multiple endings. That's actually pretty ambitious. So can you talk about the differences between choosing say light and dark in the game. Yeah, so it's not in the demo right now, but mm -hmm. uh, the power dash, once you beat the boss, you get uh, an elder shard. Mm -hmm. um, so that's like a, a, a corrupted version of the regular shards that you pick up. And you can use that shard. You can go back to the skill, sh skill shrine where you got uh, the power dash, and then it's going to be all like <laughs> crazy. Like, Do that one more time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah crazy, perfect. Like, <laughs> like uh, the Eye of Sauron, you yeah. know, that kind of feel. And, yeah. and it's going to be all about corrupting that ability. And if you do, you get like the Eldritch Dash. And then oh. that allows you to dash in any direction. And uh, it's, a different, it's, a different, uh, it's a different visual, it's a different sound, it's a different effect. And that has impacts on uh, Esh's sanity, on what happens in the game, uh, on the endings, like I was saying, and on the gameplay as well. 
Can you tell me about the enemies that are in the game? What do they represent? Who are they? What are they? Yeah, so who you see here are, are the Eschaton. They are uh, cultists, crazy cultists okay. who, are, who have been drawn to this place. Uh, we don't know why. Um, something we'll be talking about, obviously, in, in, okay. in the game. But uh, this is like the, the crazy cultist level. Uh, we're in the outer city. And uh, yeah, it's kind of the mystery of the game is, OK, what happened? Why are they here? What, why is everyone like a crazy monster? And, and learning that is part of, of the game's narrative. That's awesome. And can you give us a sneak peek on some of the abilities that are coming up? No. No. <laughs> oh. I thought I was getting somewhere with you. I thought, I oh, thought we were sorry. bonding. Yeah, but we no. are. We are. <laughs> we are bonding, but yeah, it's, it's not. I was going to exercise my Canadian connection. Yeah, Because you guys connection. are located in Montreal, Montreal, right? Montreal, Montreal. Yes. Yep. We love you guys over in Montreal. You have amazing indie dev studios yes. out there. Yes. Yeah, Canada has just yep. some crazy, great, great, great studio. Yep. Clay, uh, Drinkbox, Capybara, yep. uh, Red Hook, mm -hmm. and uh, Thunder Lotus Games. Yes, and now <laughs> Thunder Lotus Games. You know, I didn't even know you were Canadian until... Yeah, yeah. Today. Represent. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so what, talk about the music, the sound, the soundtrack yes. behind it. Because yes, yes, I yes. loved it in Jotun. Yes. So w w what's really fantastic is that uh, we'll, we're working with the same composer as Jotun, Max nice. LL. Uh, he's actually a high school friend of mine. And oh, nice. uh, we were in a band together. Oh, yeah. what did you play? I play the drums. Uh, Do you still play the drums? I try to, but they're unfortunately in my parents' uh, in a in a closet at my parents right now, <laughs> so they're very sad right now. I'm a sad Aww. drummer, but uh, yeah. So uh, the the soundtrack is going to be specifically composed. Well, it is specifically composed mm -hmm. for the moments. Obviously, Sunder is a much darker game than Joden. Yes, and uh, the sound is going to reflect that. I mean, it's an action game, but it's also it has this horror vibe. So yep. we're very much thematically inspired by Aliens. Uh, not oh. not the first one, the second one. Oh, okay. Uh, so you get like that action horror vibe, uh, which we really want to try and, and create. And audio, sound design, and music is so important. Uh, for me, uh, if, if a game doesn't have good audio, like it basically... I agree. Uh, I'm, I'm definitely one of those. If, if I'm, yeah. Whenever I stream an indie game, especially, I focus on everything the game has to offer, including the audio. I do not play any other music. And if it doesn't have, have it, it doesn't hit it spot on, it's lost like 30% of its appeal yeah. right then, right off the bat. I completely agree. Like 50% of immersion comes from yes. uh, audio, in my Absolutely. opinion. Uh, Joden without audio is a terrible game. Like it's literally it's that awful. important. It's awful. Yeah, it's terrible. It's, it's, it's like, <laughs> it's, it's horrible. Not worth playing. It's no. just garbage. And Sundered is going to be the same thing. Yeah. Like if you play it without audio, you're missing out on a huge part of the experience. Yeah. I see a lot of the, the um, yeah. Lovecraft influence there with the tentacles and whatnot. Yeah, yeah absolutely. We're, we're going to try and not go too far into the stereotypes yeah. of, the t of the tentacles and stuff. But I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a very like, it's something that you can can relate to that people know yeah. so it's 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 a balance yeah it's kind of like that whole norse mythology thing before yes. right like who in high school and elementary school didn't look back and you know go this is my favorite part of school learning about the the norse mythology the greek gods that you know whatnot yeah, absolutely. Um, and the same thing with lovecraft you're already going to be tapping into an audience that exists that is yeah. very passionate about their lore so i think that's a very smart move but also doing your own take on it yeah, absolutely. So, so we're taking a bit more creative liberties with Sundered. Uh, mm -hmm. Sundered means to be split in two, so it brings yeah. in all that resist or embrace and, and all that, that, that choice and, and what happens. So it's yeah. pretty, uh, pretty, pretty exciting, and, and we're really happy to be showing this off at TwitchCon. That's fantastic. So we're coming at the end of our time, and I'm super excited for the game. Like, I, I wasn't kidding. I saved this because I didn't want to spoil it for myself. I am not disappointed, except for right here where the game ends. <laughs> super disappointed at that. Because um, that looks epic as fudge. <laughs> Any final words? Yeah, I mean, uh, resist or embrace. Check us out, thunderlotusgames.com. Sign up uh, to our mailing list for a chance to win alpha access and to get all the news first. Awesome. And where specifically can they find you on Twitter and... Uh, Twitter is at ThunderLotusGames. ThunderLotusGames.com has all the, all the info. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time, Will and Rodriguez. Thanks to you. You guys have been great. This game looks fantastic. We'll see you guys at the other end of this break for more Indie Dev Talk. Thanks so much. Thank you. Bye.